Hi, my name is Malik Kamen. I'm an associate principal with ZS Associates, and I'm here live today at ASCO 2018 with Dr. Lee Schwartzberg. Dr. Schwartzberg is the executive director of West Cancer Clinic and also professor of medicine and chair of the hematology oncology department at the University of Tennessee. I'm curious if you have any categorizations of the types of endpoints that either are being used today or that you think will be used in the future. Yeah, so there are some new ones that are coming, and I think perhaps the best example is uh, in prostate cancer. We just had a drug approved for metastasis-free pr prostate cancer. It's a completely new endpoint. It was never used before, and the FDA accepted that, and it actually makes sense from a clinical perspective, too, mm. because you're really looking at the difference between qualitatively saying this patient has metastases versus this patient has a biomarker that suggests they're going to have metastases, but what we don't know what it means. Now, we know it's all a continuum, but there really is a, a functional difference in what you do when you see metastatic disease on a scan mm -hmm. versus what you do when you have a biomarker. And one of the things we're taught early in our careers, we don't treat numbers, but we do treat actual tumors. So this is a continuum, but it's, it's a great exercise in understanding how cancers progress and intervening earlier seems to make a difference, which is really the most exciting things. That makes a lot of sense. What do you think of some of the depth of response markers like MRD and PCR? I think depth of response is important because uh, the, the time to response and the duration of response only tell part of the story. I was involved in a trial, um, a randomized phase two trial, uh, looking at panitumumab in uh, colorectal cancer a few years ago. And we looked at depth of response as a secondary endpoint. And we saw a qualitative different response between the arms. So we think uh, to some extent it's a surrogate for better quality of uh, mm -hmm. possibly overall survival down the road. And it may explain while the response rate itself may not be different, why you could get a better overall response, overall survival mm -hmm. Uh, whether or not the PFS or the response rates are actually better based on that, that, okay. that depth of response. So these extra tools which round out uh, what we know and give more color to uh, instead of a single endpoint of response, which is arbitrarily defined, or even PFS, which is lack of a certain amount of growth, right? So I think all of these tools have use. It's really exciting. Well, it's been my pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you very much for giving us some of your time. Absolutely, my pleasure too. Thank you so much. Okay.